Hi, I'm Bart Massey. Welcome once again to Computer Sound and Music. Today we're going to talk about music feature identification, that is, trying to figure out what's going on in a piece of music from the audio. And it's a fascinating topic and a very difficult one, so this will be a brief summary of what I know. I have limited experience in this area. Hope you're all doing well out there. Let's go ahead and get started. So, we're gonna, the idea here is we're gonna take some music, we're going to take the PCM input from that music, and we're gonna look at it and try to figure out what's going on. And there's some sort of standard tasks that you do in some order when doing this kind of thing. You might try to identify beats in the music, pulses corresponding to some kind of percussion or even instrumental change. You try to identify the tempo from those beats, How what's the fundamental quarter note of your input. You might try to identify the time signature. Is the piece in three, four, five? What's going on with that? And then, having worked out those things, another set of tasks is around identifying the notes, uh, particularly the melody, the bass line. You try to identify what key the song is in because that's important to checking your analysis and understanding what's going on. So that is which scale is used to re in, the in the writing of the music. And finally, you're gonna try to identify chords and harmonies, which is a real trick. So yeah, all of these are hard. I'm gonna talk mostly about pop music. I don't know much about analyzing other kinds. Let's start by talking a little about beat ID. So the sort of obvious man method for uh, doing beat ID is, for me, is to sort of convert signal to power by squaring each sample, maybe taking the square root, then maybe taking the log. But the idea here is to try to uh, get an overall instantaneous power for the signal because we expect beats to be higher power than not beats. And what we're looking for in particular is short spikes. And it might be that you wanna do some low pass filtering or even some high pass filtering to try and smooth the signal out a little bit and sort of isolate those spikes from other things that are going on. So anything you can do to sort of sharpen up the spikes is great. The next obvious thing to do to proceed is to look for spikes above some reference amplitude. So you can auto detect the amplitude maybe, or you can just set a reference amplitude and go for that. And so if you can find spikes above a reference amplitude, that's fantastic. You might look for high first derivatives of power, that is first differences to see when the signal's going up rapidly. You might look for high second derivatives, which will happen at the start of a pulse. The second derivative will be flat, at, you know, will be sharply upwards and then flat while the pulse is rising and then it'll be zero at the top and sharply negative at the other end. And so that sort of characteristic signature of a spark, which of a pulse, which is also measurable just by doing calculus essentially, is a really good way to spot them in there. So maybe you found some beats, maybe you found some drums, maybe you found some piano attacks, some kind of percussion instrument is doing things in the sound. Even the attacks of something like a flute being keyed as opposed to first breathed into are pretty sharp attacks. And so there's a lot of potential to find these discontinuous changes in power and those will definitely translate to something you might be able to pick out of the signal. Now you might be thinking that changes in note are also a thing that could be used to detect the beat and that's absolutely, and should be treated as beats and that's absolutely true, but that's much harder. That kind of spectral analysis is a pain. So we normally just don't do that. 
and you're gonna filter out which beats are really what's really the quarter note beat by trying to match all these beats that you see to multiples and sub multiples of some plausible quarter note frequency we really don't expect beats to appear too close to the overall beat the tempo to be you know too close together too far apart you're going to try to do some built pre-filtering maybe and then you're going to try to figure out what's going on with the tempo and yeah it's it's all very heuristic it's super fiddly you spend a bunch of time maybe per piece maybe per overall trying to figure out how those knobs should be set so that this gives some kind of sensible-ish result machine learning might be a thing here next lecture we'll talk about applying machine learning in ai and this is a reasonable place in sound and it's, this is a reasonable place to try that music signals are complicated uh there's beats buried in the signal there's very irregular beats there's drum rolls there's all kinds of stuff going on it's all you know stirred together into this fancy pot and so identifying what the real beats are is tricky now you're going to look for a period i say 600 60 to 300 beats per minute here as a fundamental quarter note 300 would be really scarily fast let's say more like more likely 60 to 180 beats a minute and so you're trying to find that fundamental frequency there's a couple of standard ways to do it one is to use what's called a phase locked loop architecture you can look that up the idea is that i run something at a regular beat and then adjust its phase forward or backwards which corresponds to shifting the frequency really to uh try and make it hit on beat and that can give me a pretty good idea of what's going on the other all obvious thing to do is to apply digital signal processing messages methods like autocorrelation if i can sort of slide the signal over a certain amount and there's a strong correlation between the beats or near beats then you may be looking at that slide over may be the fundamental quarter note assuming you somehow go through all this heuristic fiddling and you know where the quarter notes are throughout the piece notice too that the tempo of pieces can vary there's it isn't like most things are clocked by an accurate metronome musicians will speed up or slow down accidentally and or on purpose by quite a lot so you got to really watch out for that once you think you know where the beats are in each measure and how many of them there are now you know now you're looking for how many of them there are. you're looking for is this a four four time a three fourth time a six eighth time you can tell maybe by accents you can also look for chord changes chord changes are a great clue as to the number of quarter notes so if you if you've got some measurement of the harmonics then that's a good signal as well uh, now you want to identify notes and identifying notes can be a really very fancy thing to do there's all kinds of dsp that i don't understand very well for deciding what the notes were that did a thing in particular remember that notes tend to have harmonics and so if I identify some note, I sort of want to take into account the fact that it may be spelling across the spectrum. So the simple thing to do is to build a filter bank. So a filter bank's just a bunch of bandpass, narrow bandpass filters where the notes should be. And then, you know, I I center each of those filters at the one of the frequencies on an equal tempered scale typically and i'm going to watch for changes in power at those frequencies that correspond to notes if somebody's out of tune that could be a problem so setting the right there again a lot of heuristics setting the right width of those bandpass filters is a thing and you may want extra resolution here even so you know a filter bank is an FFT is an equally spaced filter bank 
you may choose to break stuff up into octaves and do F FFTs on those octaves to get really fine resolution. It's not clear what's the best thing to do. So I have this thing called Fine Notes that you can check out that actually tries to identify notes in a WAV file. It's very, very simple at this point and doesn't doesn't do a fantastic job, but it at least gives you some idea. And what I'm doing here is just assuming that I'm, I have music that has single notes in it. I'm assuming that those notes are in a particular octave and scale. And there I am trying to find out what this is using this method. Here's an example, a link to a paper that goes way farther and uses fancy stuff to do this. So maybe I've got beat and tempo and time signature and I'm picking notes out. Now I sort of want to take apart what those notes are doing together, how this notes, the notes fit together into a piece of music. And like I've mentioned before, a good heuristic is the melody is the top sounding note, the bass line is the bottom sounding note and gives you maybe base roots of chord values a lot of the time. And rests are a big deal. It's hard to detect a rest sometimes in music and it confuses things. So we're going to see which. Now we're going to try to find what key it's in and what chord is there. We're going to try to look at the key signature and try to pick a major or minor scale that gives very few accidentals in the music. That's the easiest heuristic to use. And a good secondary heuristic, especially for pop, is we know that the one, four, five chords and the minor, relative minor versions, the six, two, three chords, are the chords that I expect to find there. So, am I finding these things? It's not like everything, though, is in one, four, five. There will be chords from all over the place coming in, and check, you got to check for those as well. And really untangling everything to the point where you can get reliable chord identification is quite hard. And you know, machine learning here could be a real powerful tool because this is such a tricky task. I should be clear that the state of the art is not that great. There's stuff out there, it gets better every year. When I gave this a year ago, it wasn't as good as it is now. But this is a very, very thorny problem, and I suspect it's going to be a long time before people are reliably reverse engineering a piece of music. GarageBand transcribes music, which is cool, from recognition, but it uses MIDI and actually has key on and off events to start the process with, which makes it quite a bit easier. The transcription is cool. I, I, one of the dreams of everybody in music before the computers hit so hard was to be able to do this, to be able to say, oh, I'm gonna play something, please write down on in music notation, like we've seen earlier, what I just played and we're getting there we're very very slowly getting there and there's standard now very standard software tools I my Android phone this year is automatically from Google if there's a piece of music playing in the room I can get out my phone and look at it and it will tell me what the piece was, and also who wrote it, which should be a good clue that they're not doing mostly the stuff we talked about here. <laughs> they're uh, doing matching against a database of recorded songs against somebody's giant corpus of recorded songs. And so that's a whole different thing. 
But I should say that somebody had a great idea a long time ago about just looking at up, down, same from note to note for a melody. And so some of these tools have the ability to, for example, sing a song and it will look at the up, down, it's up, down, same database. And it turns out that's selective enough to usually cut it down to one melody if you've got six or seven or eight notes. So there's always tricks. It's always fun, but really decomposing a piece of music into its component parts from audio is a fairly tough trick. So that's what I've got to tell you. Again, I hope everybody's staying safe out there. Thanks very much for listening.